Hi, this is Rhonda Glazner, and I'm coming to you today with a word of encouragement and faith. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you so much for giving me a word to share with the listeners today. I thank you, Father, that you sent Jesus to become the bread of life, and we break bread together today. We need the nourishment of the bread of life, the bread of Jesus. Jesus is also the wine, the wine representing the blood that was spilled out for us. Thank you, God, that we come to this table, we eat this bread, we drink this wine. Even though we're not taking communion right now, it would be a good time. But Lord, we can take communion every day. and We thank you, Father, that we have come into this covenant. And we come to your table. We come to your words, God. And we eat them. And we become nourished and strengthened for this day and every day. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, what a privilege it is to be able to come and speak with you today. And I wish that each and every one of you were here with me right now at my home in Belleville, Texas, on our property that God has given us called Shekinah Glory. But hopefully one day you will come here. We have these things finished that we're preparing. Um, we will have many people coming here. For now, though, uh, we are banned from having large groups anyway because of the things going on in the world called, namely, the coronavirus. And uh, so we are spending more time putting words out over the Internet, and that's always a good thing to do anyway. But this morning, the Lord, when my husband was talking with me, the Lord just dropped this word into my spirit. And so then I had to get it together to bring it to this table to you. Thank you, Lord. The word that God said to me when my husband was talking is, if it's not kingdom, do not receive it. So many things were passing then on into my spirit and he was telling me this that these things are not kingdom like for instance lying that's not kingdom of God uh, sickness is not kingdom of God um, lack is not kingdom of God many many things like that so I listed them and we'll come back to them in a bit but first I want to talk to you what is the kingdom of God what is kingdom because hopefully that is where you live in the kingdom of God it is definitely where I want to be every single day, every single moment of every day. So we must know what is this place that we are a citizen of. There's a little song that God has given me today. Oh, it says, I'm in the kingdom of heaven. I'm in the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus is the king. And I just kept singing it over I'm in the kingdom of heaven. I'm in the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus is the king. I'm in the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus, you're the king. This is the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus is the king. And it's true. He is the only king in the kingdom of heaven. Let's look at the word. Hebrews chapter 11, verses one through three. I'm gonna read a little bit in Hebrews and I'm gonna paraphrase a little bit in this, in this chapter as well. But verses one through three, Hebrews chapter 11 says, now faith brings, oh, people, I am reading in the, the um, Passion Translation today. So if it looks a little different than your translation, this is the Passion. Now faith brings our hopes into reality and becomes the foundation needed 
to acquire the things we long for. It is all the evidence required to prove what is still unseen. This testimony of faith is what previous generations were commended for. Faith empowers us to see that the universe was created and beautifully coordinated by the power of God's words. He spoke and the invisible realm gave birth to all that is seen. So, ha, huh, hallelujah. That's our first scripture. Note that wording, the invisible realm gave birth to all that is seen. Two different things. There's an invisible realm, which gave the birth to all that is seen. So the place where we live here on earth is all that is seen. The invisible realm, we will find out as we go along. We just try to catch on to this. Two places. One place is seen, one place is experienced. I can tap the desk. I touch my hair. These are physical things in a physical place. Clothing. Okay. So, there is a realm that is seen. And there is an invisible realm. The invisible realm is where God spoke and he made everything visible come into being. Two realms. The invisible realm is the kingdom of God. That's where his creation happened. He created the natural realm from the kingdom realm. Thank you, Jesus. Now, in chapter 11 of Hebrews, it talks about all of these people who believed God's promises to them and they walked in faith. It lists a few people. Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Sarah, the prophets. In verse 11, it says, these heroes, so all of these people written about what all they did, what all they believed in Hebrews 11. God calls them heroes. These heroes all died still clinging to their faith, not even receiving all that had been promised to them, but they saw beyond the horizon the full fulfillment of their promises, and they gladly embraced it from afar. They all lived their lives on earth as those who belonged to another realm. Because they did belong to another realm. Verse 14, for clearly those who live this way are longing for the appearing of a heavenly city and if their hearts were still remembering what they had left behind, they would have found an opportunity to go back. But they could not turn back, for their hearts were fixed on what was far greater, that is, the heavenly realm. The heavenly realm, the heavenly realm, the kingdom of God the place where God created everything from, the heavenly realm. So these people, their hearts were fixed on things that they did not see. And it says if they would have thought about going back to the things they could see, they thought of living just in the natural realm that they would not be walking in faith. It says they could not turn back, for their hearts were fixed on what was far greater, that is, the heavenly realm. 
So I'm hoping that we can latch on to something today that God wants our hearts to be fixed on something far greater than anything we can experience in the natural. He wants us in the kingdom of God up higher, the heavenly realm. He wants us there like those people in Hebrews 11. Let's go to Romans chapter 14. Verse 17. Thank you, Lord. God is so good. His word is so rich. For the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, is not a matter of rules about food or drink, but is in the realm of the Holy Spirit, filled with righteousness, peace, and joy. So what Paul is talking about here when he is talking about food and drink is he's trying to settle an argument that some people were having at that time, you know. Should we eat this food? Should we not eat that food? Should we eat this food in front of others? It's a it's a discussion that they were having at that time trying to solve an argument or to set some precedent of what should be done and what should not be done at the time. But the principle is the same here. The kingdom of God is not a matter of rules because the discussion could be about anything. So say for us, we could have rules in our church. Uh, I don't know. My church doesn't have a lot of rules, but maybe your church could have rules like don't take your shoes off. Because if you take your shoes off in this church, uh, maybe you're going to be told to put your shoes on. I don't know. So in my church, you can take your shoes off when you, I, like I go up and, and I'm dancing. I cannot dance with my shoes on. So our church, just needless to say, does not have a lot of, of uh, um, parameters that you have to fit into. Um, anyway, so in this, in this verse, he's, Paul is talking about, it's not a matter of rules. It's not a matter of rules. But the kingdom of God is in the realm of the Holy Spirit. So we're, we're hearing these things. Realm of the Holy Spirit, the realm of the Spirit, the kingdom of God, the realm of heaven, the kingdom of heaven. This is different. This is different. It's not rules oriented. It's not religion. It's the way Jesus walked on the earth. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is within you. The kingdom of heaven is within you if Jesus is in you. Thank you, Lord. Okay, let's look at Luke chapter 17, verses 20 through 36. The title, the subtitle of this little section is God's Kingdom Realm Within You. Jesus was once asked by the Jewish religious leaders, when will God's kingdom realm come? Jesus responded, God's kingdom realm does not come simply by obeying principles or by waiting for signs. The kingdom is not discovered in one place or another for God's kingdom realm is already expanding within some of you now look down at the footnote in the passion translation it says translated from the Aramaic text the implication is that God's kingdom realm is a person Jesus Christ the reality of God's kingdom appears when Jesus lives within us by faith. So that's how the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, is within you. It's when Jesus is within you by faith. And Jesus, as he gave me, God gave me that little song. In this kingdom, Jesus 
is the king. So that's really important. We don't want to be people who receive Jesus as our savior, like a fire insurance. Like, okay, now I know I'm not going to hell because Jesus is my savior. Jesus must be the Lord of our lives. We don't want to be like, there's an, another story about, um, there's these um, 10 virgins. Then some of them had their oil lamps full of oil. They were waiting for the bridegroom to come. Some had their oil lamps full of oil and the others did not. And we don't want to be the ones that didn't have the oil. The oil represents the presence of God, spending time in the presence of Jesus and becoming one with him. The Bible tells us we are saved, but we are being saved. It's like, like somebody gets married and they're married and then they, they become one on that wedding night they become one physically, but throughout their marriage, they're continually becoming more and more as one, as one person that um, makes the same decisions and doesn't fight within themselves, but they um, come into agreement. We want to come into complete agreement with Jesus. We want to say, Jesus is Lord of my life. I live in the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of heaven, and the kingdom of heaven is within me. I don't pay attention to the things around me just in the natural realm like they are so important. I must come to the realization that what I don't see, this kingdom of heaven within me, is so much more important. Than what I do see because you see everything that manifests out here in the natural world is a result of what is inside of us like every word that we speak first begins as the thought right we don't see the thoughts we don't see the words come out of our mouth but we believe that those words will happen. So we have faith in our words. Our words are either positive and good or they're poor and negative. We don't, generally people don't just speak words and don't, don't believe that they'll happen or don't believe in their words. So what we think and what we speak up out of our spirit man is what creates the world around us. Just like God created the entire world and all people and every single thing from the spirit realm, the heavenly realm. God is a spirit. We are made in his image, right? We have the power of creation within us. If we have the kingdom of heaven within us, and even if we don't live in the kingdom of heaven, we were created by God in his image. So we still have the power of creation within us. Look around you today. Let us look around us today and see, what have I created with my words, with my thoughts, my words, my belief? What have I created? Maybe some things we want to change. We go to God with that, don't we? Say, God, wow, I don't like this. I want to change this. Show me how. We get into the Word of God. And we ask the Holy Spirit, come and change me, Lord. Jesus, come and be the Lord of my life. It's wonderful that you're my Savior, Jesus. But I need you to be my Lord. I need you to be my King. I need to bow down before you and let you just take over every single part of this life. I don't want to run this life anymore. That's a powerful prayer. 
I hope you'll pray that prayer today. I hope you maybe just prayed it with me just now. And if you didn't, run it back. Pray it with me. We want Jesus as Lord. We're in the kingdom of heaven. We're in his kingdom. Is he on the throne? Is he the king? How are things going? With him, things are going well. When he's the king, things are going well. Not that there won't be trials in this world. There will. He said there would be trials. Right? But he said, don't fear, because I have overcome the world. So if Jesus lives in you, and he has overcome the world, now you can rest. He's in charge. It's a great place to be, this kingdom of heaven. Now let's look at Matthew chapter 13, verses 31 through 33. I just rejoice in the Lord today. It is a beautiful, rainy spring day here in Belleville. I hope you've been having a great day too in the Spirit of God. Matthew 13, 31 through 33. Jesus was talking about the kingdom of heaven. People were asking him questions about it. And he answered them in two parables. In verse 31, then Jesus taught them another parable. Heaven's kingdom realm can be compared to the tiny mustard seed that a man takes and plants in his field. Although the smallest of all the seeds, it eventually grows into the greatest of garden plants, becoming a tree for birds to come and build their nest in its branches. Then he taught them another parable. Heaven's kingdom realm can be compared to yeast that a woman takes and blends into three measures of flour and then waits until all of the dough rises. So two tiny, seemingly insignificant things Jesus is comparing the kingdom of heaven to. But two tiny, insignificant things that the seed when it's planted and the yeast when it's mixed into the the dough, they both grow and expand until they are very large and they affect everything around them. So the kingdom of heaven is not a small thing. It's not something you want to just enter in, oh, I'm in the kingdom of heaven, and think, oh, I know all about it. Yeah, it's the kingdom of heaven. No, no, no. It is to affect everything about you and everything around you. Everything about me, everything around me is affected by this kingdom of heaven that is within me. Kingdom of heaven, the heavenly realm, the lordship of Jesus is over 100% more important than circumstances threats, any difficulties of the world. The kingdom of heaven will affect all of it. I promise you. Now let's look at Luke chapter 1, 46 through 55. Thank you for your word, God. This is called Mary's Prophetic Song. And Mary sang this song. This is when Mary went to visit her cousin, Elizabeth. And she said, My soul is ecstatic, overflowing with praises to God. My spirit bursts with joy over my life-giving God. For he set his tender gaze upon me, his lowly servant girl. And from here on, everyone will know that I have been favored and blessed. The Mighty One has worked a mighty miracle for me. Holy is his name. 
mercy kisses all his godly lovers from one generation to the next mighty power flows from him to scatter all those who walk in pride powerful princes he tears from their thrones Woo. and he lifts up the lowly to take their place those who hunger for him will always be filled but the smug and the self-satisfied he will send away empty because he can never forget to show mercy he has helped his chosen servant israel keeping his promise to abraham and to his descendants forever mary here when she is rejoicing like this do you know she is rejoicing because she is she is pregnant with the kingdom of heaven she's pregnant with jesus are you pregnant with the kingdom of heaven today god if we know you lord if we receive jesus we are pregnant with the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is growing more powerful and strong within us every moment. Let us realize this, Holy Spirit. We can only realize this from you, God. Father God, cause your kingdom to be powerfully effective within us and everywhere around us, Lord. May we walk around in this earth today, God, effecting everything by your kingdom thank you lord oh god we thank you oh thank you god one last scripture matthew eleven twelve. 12 i feel the holy spirit so strong and powerful in this word right now matthew eleven twelve. 12 From the moment John stepped onto the scene until now, the realm of heaven's kingdom is bursting forth. Jesus said this. And passionate people have taken hold of its power. We must be passionate people to take hold of the kingdom of heaven's power. I'm reading the footnote now in the Passion Translation to that verse. It says, or the kingdom of heaven, you've probably heard it more this way, or the kingdom of heaven is entered into by force and the violent ones take hold of it. Heard it like that before? It's so true. You know, there's everything coming against the kingdom of heaven in the world today. And there's everything coming against your life personally if you have the kingdom of heaven within you. Just like Jesus, he said, you will suffer persecution in this world. You will suffer difficulties. Paul, he suffered. Paul, the apostle, all the prophets, they all suffered difficulties, didn't they? That's because the kingdom of heaven was within them. And the kingdom of this world, the kingdom of hell, of Satan, is, of course, diametrically opposed to the kingdom of heaven within you. So if you feel like all hell is breaking loose around you, be encouraged. The kingdom of heaven is within you, and the kingdom of heaven is powerful in you, but you must access it and you've been given the power to access it by the word of god and the spirit of god within you we must take it we must take the kingdom of heaven by force we must take the promises of god we must receive them we must eat the flesh of jesus and drink his blood and remember possibly every day i take communion almost every day we must remember what was done for us. We passed out of darkness, meaning 
out of the kingdom of this world that we were born into, into the kingdom of light, his glorious light. We became new creations, but we must access what has been given to us. The Lord showed me some things today to bring before you and to just pray and release authority over these things in your life today. These are some things that are not in the kingdom of God. Sickness. I will read these and I will take authority over every one of them in your life. Okay? And then we will go back and we will receive the opposite of this list. Sickness. This includes aches and pains. This includes short-term and long-term illnesses. Enticement to sin and also sin not in the kingdom of God. A lustful way of thinking. Lack or thoughts of lack. Fear of any kind. Jealousy, anxiety, unrest, anything not of rest and peace, fatigue, impatience, or a hurried way of life, the impulse to control others or situations, a sense of failure or defeat, Oppression, depression, or deep sadness, covetousness, impulsivity, like doing things just out of habit, even religious acts, condemnation, judging, and lying. And these are just one list. But in the name of Jesus right now, I take authority over all of these things that are not kingdom of God, not in the kingdom of heaven for these people. And I ask you to agree with me if you're listening today. Agree over your own life. We will not accept things that are not in the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, into our lives. Because God said to me this morning, if it's not kingdom, do not receive it. Do not accept it. Do not host it. Do not allow it. Take authority over it. I take authority over sickness, over sin, over lust, over the lack, a sense of lack, agreeing with that, over fear, agreeing with any fear. I take authority over jealousy, which leads to many other things, over unrest, over fatigue. I take authority over impatience or a hurried way of life. I take authority over the spirit of control of people or situations. I take authority over a sense of failure or defeat. I take authority over oppression, over depression, over covetousness, over impulsive behaviors, over condemnation, judging, and lying in the name of Jesus. We do not accept these things. Agree with me, brother and sister. Say amen if you agree. And I urge you to go back and listen to this again and say it again if these things come to you and try to tell you, oh, I'm here, I'm here, all right. You say, no, you're not allowed in my life. You're not taking up one bit of real estate in me because I am full of the kingdom of heaven. I am full of God. Jesus lives within me. So in the name of Jesus, also we call and we receive, we receive from heaven wholeness in place of sickness. We receive wholeness from the top of our heads to the bottom, the soles of our feet. We receive the wholeness of God. By his stripes, we were healed. We receive a pure mind. We have the mind of Christ. We don't live in a lustful way. We don't walk in the enticing path towards sin. We don't give it any place. We receive, Lord, abundance in place of lack. We receive boldness and faith instead of fear. We thank you, Father, for boldness and faith.
We thank you, Father, for love instead of jealousy. We thank you, Father, that we are not anxious. We do not have unrest. We are peaceful. We are full of the peace of God, the peace that passes all understanding. We are not fatigued people. We don't walk around in the natural. We walk around in the spirit of God, the spirit of heaven. We have energy from God. We thank you, Father, that we are not living in an impatient or a hurried way but we are gracious and we wait for the promise and we live in faith and in confidence instead. We are not impulsive people in this kingdom of God. No, we make conscious choices according to the mind of Christ and according to the word of God. We thank you, Father, that we are not of the oppressed, we are not of the depressed, but we are of the ones who walk in the kingdom of heaven in a happy way with a light step because we realize that our burdens, our burdens are light because we've given our heavy burden to Jesus and his burden is light, his yoke is easy, and this is where we live. We thank you, Father, that we are not the covetous people. Covet, we do not have covetousness in our lives because we have all we need. We know that in this kingdom of heaven where Jesus is king, everything is abundant. And there is no reason to covet anything that anyone else has. We trust, oh God, that you've given us everything that is for us. Everything that is meant for us and not something meant for someone else. We thank you, Father, that we are not condemners in this kingdom, but we are lovers in this kingdom. We embrace everyone, and we do not allow condemnation to come to us from hell either. We know that Satan is the accuser of the brethren, and we kick his ways, and we kick his thoughts out away from us, far away from us. We do not accuse anyone or condemn anyone or allow ourselves to be accused or condemned. Jesus approves of us. Thank you, Lord. We do not judge ourselves harshly. We do not judge others harshly, but we walk in love and we are truthful. We are not liars in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father God. I must close because the time has really gone on. And, but, but we thank you, Father God, that you are the fresh water for us. You are the wine. You are the oil. You are the bread, God. You are the nourisher of this kingdom of heaven within us. And this kingdom of heaven is so big within us that it has affected everything around us and everything that we are. We belong to you, God, and we thank you so much. We are not our own. We have been bought with a price. We live in this kingdom, and Jesus is the king. Thank you for listening. God bless you today with truth and light, hope and peace. Until we meet again.